From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Friday, May 24th. I'm Abby Larico. Some of St. Louis's top drag performers will headline the gala in Chesterfield Saturday. The event comes as Republicans in Missouri and elsewhere are passing laws that target LGBTQ people. For anyone who's there in the audience who's heterosexual, we tell them, we need you to stand up with us. And you need to be as loud as I am. St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin reports on a drag party with a purpose. That's coming up on The Gateway. St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones has her first official challenger. Eighth Ward Alderwoman Kara Spencer announced her plans to run for the office in a Facebook post Thursday. She will officially launch her campaign in early June. Spencer says the city is still not working for people despite millions of dollars in federal investment. She says she better understands the need for all branches of government to work together. Right now, we're getting news releases about what's going on in our own government um, from outside media sources. There's really no collaboration and coordination, or at least to a level that uh, we need to be uh, functioning um, at a top level. A spokeswoman for the Jones campaign says Spencer's announcement is not a surprise, and they look forward to focusing on the voters. Jones beat Spencer in 2021 by four percentage points. To the surprise of few, Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker is not a fan of a symbolic referendum in Madison County that will ask voters if they should explore separating from the Chicago area. St. Louis Public Radio's Will Bauer reports. At an unrelated event in Pontoon Beach, Pritzker said he was disappointed with the county board's actions. Last month, the majority Republican board voted to place a non-binding question to voters. It's part of a broader secession movement in downstate Illinois. Pritzker says Illinois residents should be supporting each other. The idea that some place in Illinois wants to kick out another place in Illinois should not be on the ballot. It shouldn't be something that's um, part of the lexicon and discussion of politicians. We're one state. The secession advocates largely object to Illinois' progressive politics, driven by the vast population of Chicago and its suburbs. Neighboring Jersey County also passed its own non-binding referendum this month. I'm Will Bauer, St. Louis Public Radio. Pritzker made those remarks at the unveiling of the new Madison County Transit headquarters in the Metro East. Leaders and local officials opened the $15 million facility Thursday in Pontoon Beach. Madison County Transit, or MCT, is largely known for its bus service and vast bike trail network. MCT Managing Director S.J. Morrison says the new building will be a catalyst to help the area's residents. Today is about dedicating a building and securing our campus, but it's also about building a stronger region and securing the future for our residents, regardless of their income or abilities. The new headquarters received more than $10 million in state funds and $4 million from the federal government to complete the project. City SC's first season gave the whole region a reason to celebrate, according to a new fiscal impact study released Thursday. It found the Major League Soccer team generated more than $168 million in economic activity during the 2023 season. The team and Greater St. Louis Inc. commissioned the study, which also found the construction of City Park created $1.4 billion in economic impact since 2020. This includes money spent directly at and around City Park, business transactions that happen because of the team's presence, and incremental tax revenue. Andy Taylor is part of the team's ownership group. He said in a statement that he's encouraged by these results, but sees them as a call to action to continue investing in downtown. And just down the street from City Park, the unaffiliated City Garden reopens on Saturday morning. That's after an eight-month renovation that included the installation of three new sculptures and the return of two older ones. The Gateway Foundation funds City Garden, which opened in 2009. Executive Director Heather Sweeney says the kickoff event will be a double celebration, reopening the park and showing off its new artwork. With the fencing down, it now means that everyone can experience the entirety of the park, but in particular, right, we want people to welcome these three new pieces. I'm quite excited for people to get to experience that artistry along with the artistry of of City Garden itself. The reopening party will include food trucks, music, and giveaways designed by local artists. It goes until 3 p.m. Organizers of a night of LGBTQ solidarity in Chesterfield on Saturday are touting it as a first-of-its-kind event. The gala will feature many of St. Louis's top drag performers, plus music and dancing. St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin spoke with Greg Coleman, who will host as drag queen Karma T. Cassidy. 
Goodwin asked Coleman what drew him to drag. My mom jokingly would say, like, well, you can sing as Greg. Why are you singing as Karma? I don't get it. And I would say because Karma gets people looking at her. You know, when I go up there as Karma, they don't see Greg. They see this fabulous creature with big hair and big lips and the whole package, curvy and outfits out of this world, you know, costumes. So they're seeing something that I I don't feel comfortable providing. But as karma, I feel 100% comfortable providing it. When I dress in my normal day, everyday life, I don't dress flamboyantly, although I have a rainbow shirt on today. <laughs> but it's you a know. it's a button-down shirt. Exactly. It's, it's a button Straddling down. the line. <laughs> exactly. It's a button-down <laughs> rainbow shirt. But, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't walk around flamboyantly. Nothing wrong with that. But for me, that's just not my comfortable zone. But as karma, I would strut down the street in a sequin gown. I think that most performers, they find themselves coming out of their shell a little bit when they're in their other form, so to speak. You've been doing this a while. Yeah. How has it changed for you in the last couple of years? There's more fear with a lot of us who are performing, I think, in today's day and age. I remember right after there was a lot of protesting and things, performing at at certain bars here in St. Louis, and the bar owners would have to tell us, here's the exit plan if someone walks in with a gun. You never think you're going to have that opportunity, like to be shot while you're performing and bringing people joy. But you know, after certain shootings happen in our community, it 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 scares you. So it's changed in that way. I think we're more aware. You know, we're more aware of our surroundings. Um, we we don't just walk around without someone with us at all times. But I think it's also emboldened myself. I'm not afraid to say certain things that I might have been afraid of saying in times past. You have to stand up for what's right, what I believe is right, and what, and you've got to stand against what's wrong. Because I think it's important that we talk about what's going on in our world and that we, for anyone who's there in the audience who's heterosexual, that we tell them, we need you to stand up with us, that you have to be here standing hand in hand with me, and you need to be as loud as I am because if you're not, then, then, then people won't hear us. And, and that's true about any marginalized community, that you have to have people who aren't marginalized to stand with you um, in the fight. And so it's important for me because most of the shows I do nowadays are predominantly a heterosexual crowd. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Has yeah. that changed? Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. When I first started, it was predominantly a, a, a gay crowd, you know, gays, lesbians, trans people. But now, most of the places I do, I work at are straight venues um, owned by straight people who understand that drag shows bring them money. So, so what you see with your own eyes is mm-hmm. a wider spectrum of people at drag shows, while at the same time there are people out there, particularly on the right, trying to further marginalize this activity. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about the gay law and what is special about this event and what do you think it's going to mean to, to people who are there? I hope it's a celebration. The gala is really unique, and it's the first time in the St. Louis metro area that any major venue has has offered to give us the venue for the night, local entertainers as the headliners. Our hopes is just to bring a lot of fun and a lot of laughter and a lot of feeling to the evening. That was Greg Coleman, who performs as drag queen Karma T. Cassidy, speaking with St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin. Our David Cazares edited that piece. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Abby Larico, and from the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Have a safe and happy weekend.